Hi, welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through Autodesk AutoCAD 2021 Exercise 2. In this exercise, we take a look at the solids capability with the Revolve feature. And we're also going to look a little bit at the parametrics functionality and how that could remove some of the, what I call, witchcraft as far as uh, offsetting lines and trimming tons of things. You're actually going to see we're going to not even use the trim tool, but yet we'll make a a pretty decent sketch in here. So as you can see up on the screen currently, that is the model that is our goal. And it's a solid model. You can see that there's some dimensions on it and it has some features, some fillets and so on and so forth. So let's begin. I'm gonna to go to new and as always I just use the standard, the AutoCAD 3D and what we're going to do here, so I'm going to go to the Home button, and I am going to go with the set of World. I'm going to go to Front. And now we could click on the top plane there, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, sorry, and under View, I'm sorry, under Visualize, Instead of realistic, set it right now to wireframe. And later on, we could go back and change it to something different. But it's just easier to see. And I zoomed out with a couple scrolls of my mouse, uh, short little scrolls, just to, zoom, to see this a little bit easier. I'm going to turn on the grid, the snap, I should say, snap to grid. And let's go over to home. Now we're going to start off with the line tool. Now you can see we're going to create that cross section that you saw, that wheel. And so let's go to line. And right here on uh, this first point, let's make it one inch high. Okay, oops, I don't think I drew that. Let me try, hit enter again, click, and then just click right there, and then hit escape. Now hit enter again, and it resets our line tool, and go to that origin there, click, and drag this out. And we know, uh, I just so I'll show you what the drawing looks like in a second. It is supposed to be about two and a half inches to the left, so 2.5. Enter. Okay, then we're going to go uh, and hit Escape for right now. Okay, I'm going to turn off the snap and zoom up a little closer. So we have the general configuration what we're looking for and where I'm getting this in the training guide now this is a training guide this is the SOLIDWORKS training guide it's my Creo it's my inventor training guide I use the same models and all those different systems and so I have to write this training guide I haven't done it yet but you could see here you could take it out of any training guide there's the dimensions of our cross section and we're just going to draw one half of the mirrored over so all these will be halvesies as far as the dimensions go. So we can see the five inches across that's dimensioning past the center line if we're the full size of the wheel. We're only going to do 2.5. And then you can see over here, this is two inches high, so we'll take out one inch. And then over here, um, you'll see 18 degrees on that little spacer there and a three quarter inch diameter hole. So 0 0.375, we'll draw that. So let's begin. Click on the line tool and glide up to this edge here and let's uh, actually uh, let up that point and click. Now drag it to the left and 0.375. Enter. Now drag it up and we don't really know what this dimension is. It's actually going to be a, a combination of constraints with the angle that we're going to have in just a moment some other dimensions. So for right now it, I'll just say it's about 0.9ish. Okay, and just drag it straight up. Now this one we do have a value for, it's 0.4. Hit enter, and it goes across. Now this, we're gonna go ahead and we want this to be um, 108, and basically that you saw that 18 degrees, 90 plus 18, okay. So let's just get that to where it's 108. And uh, the actual dimension of 0.8-ish, that's good. Like mine's 0 .8, uh, 0 0.8011. Just get it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just so you're not touching the bottom line yet. Click. Now drag across here. And this one's going to be approximately an inch. So just get close. Click. Drag this up. Again, a, a little less than an inch. Click. And then across. Now this one we do have a dimension for, 0.25. 
Now go straight down and connect. And then hit escape. Now what I meant to do actually was have that go all the way out to the, that end line, but that's okay. We're going to add some constraints here that will help us out with that. So first of all, parametrics. Now parametrics are like Autodesk Inventor, which uh, as well as um, Fusion 360 implement this technology. Parametrics is a wonderful thing. In the old days, to draw this, we would have actually taken that the line in the center where the Y is and offset it 0.375, then we might offset it uh, 2.5 to the left and then minus that, by, you know, maybe 2.25. And so you'd make a lot of offsets of these lines. Then you'd be trimming, you'd be extending. That's all a waste of time. With parametrics, it eliminates the need to do that. And so you can see we haven't used the trim tool at all, and we have our profile just about done, but let's take a closer look. So let's go to the parametrics, go to Auto Constrain, and uh, over here, click and drag a fence to surround everything. And hit Enter. Now hit Show All, and you'll see all these little blocks come up with symbols in them. A lot of these are parallelism. So if we hover over this, there's parallelism. And as you hover over, the, it identifies, it highlights brighter the lines that are associated with that particular constraint. And these are common elements of geometry. Like, look at that, that's horizontal. It's going to lock in horizontally. This is coincident. The two points intersected, and that's a coincident point. So it's added those things for us with the auto constraint. Now, we need to help it along a little bit. There's two layers of parametric constraints. So you have dimensions and you have cons uh, these common elements of geometry. So using those, it eliminates the need to have to do a lot of trimming and all that other work. You can do some really cool things without all of what I used to call like witchcraft. It's not really witchcraft, but it's just a term like you're offsetting lines and making things tangent and calculating the geometry, which was a lot of work. Sorry. I'll go... Uh, into this now. Okay, so another thing we might want to do, see the lock tool? Click on the lock up there. We're going to lock down this corner here. All right. And hit enter, maybe lock down this one up here. Hit enter, and let's go ahead and lock down that one too. And I think that we already got that one. Okay, so by locking those, we're going to be able to add some constraints and they won't float away on us. So let's go now to linear and click on this point and this point here. Drag the dimension down. It should be 0.375. So just click, hit enter, and that's fine. Okay, if it isn't, you could go ahead and change it, and that's the beauty of parametrics. It'll actually update. I don't want to change it right now. I'm going to wait till we get a few more constraints on before we start tinkering with that. All right, the next one we know, hit enter again, click on this point and this point. Oops, drag that up, 0.4, that's exactly what it is supposed to be. Click, enter. Um, over here, let's um, enter again, and it goes back to our dimension tool. Click on this point and this point, and that is supposed to be 0.25. Hit enter. Now, it would be nice if it automatically did this, but I'm not aware of any way in the software to do it. Other softwares do automatically do it. But um, this one, we have to help it along a little bit. As far as I know, if someone knows a way, please post that in the comments below, because I'd like to know. All right, and now let's hit Enter again. And now we have to actually, uh, yeah, we're in linear. So select this point here to this point here. And that is supposed to be one. Look at that. Remember, that one was not perfect because we didn't know the exact dimension. So click, type in one, hit Enter, and it will even it out. All right, now hit enter again, click on this point here, and we could click on that, that point there, drag it to the left, click, and that's going to be 0.125. All right, and you see that the geometry is starting to adapt. It just moved a little bit there. Okay, now we need to go ahead and add the angle in. So let's go over here to the angle, click on this line, and this line here and get that down there and you can see it's at 17 when we adjusted it maybe it changed click that's supposed to be 18 and you'll see we're now constrained
Oh, we have one more. Go back to linear, and this point down here to this point here, and bring it, zoom out maybe a little bit, bring it straight up, and that's going to be one inch. And uh, just hit the top there, and it should center. Okay, let's go back to our training guide, and we could look at that. Now, these training guides, by the way, are at vertanu1.com. I don't have the one for AutoCAD up just yet, but maybe by the time you are looking, you'll see it. You have, um, we have Creo, SolidWorks, and Autodesk. Any of those have the same exact lessons with the same dimensions. You could just go in there, find it, click on it. They're free PDFs. Page 29 will bring you here, and you can see the dimensions. All right, and that covers all the dimensions that we had on here that we needed. And remember, a lot of them we went like halves. All right, the next step, we want to mirror that over. So click here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit better there. I'm going to turn off, I'm going to hide all those constraints. And I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to the Modify box and find Mirror. Now, up here, click to and drag to Surround the geometry you want to mirror. Notice mine isn't quite on enveloping the vertical center line. We don't need that. and We don't want the, the line attached to it. So right here is good. Click on that. Hit enter. And now it's asking for two points. So we could click on this point here and then this point right here. And hit uh, erase Objects, no, you don't want to erase objects. And you know what I just realized is I forgot a dimension here, the, the 2.5. So let's try and add that. Go back to parametric, and let's see what happens here, because I haven't tried it like this. It should just update. So let, like if we click here on that point to this point, drag that up, and that needs to be 2.5. We should see it stretch. And there it goes. Unfortunately, notice it didn't carry over the geometry below it. Um, perhaps if I had done another auto constraint, it would have aligned them collinear. But we could do that. You'll see we actually have, there is a collinear right here. A collinear, collinear constraint enables to select this line and make this one collinear to it. It should move over. But then we have this issue here. And I'm going to hit enter again and see if we could fix that collinear to collinear. And there we go. It's all aligned now. The other thing you could do if it's too complex of a sketch is just delete that geometry underneath and remirror it after you have everything set. So as you can see, we've, we've got it to work. All right, I'm going to hit Escape. And now we're ready to, we don't want to revolve just yet. What we want to do. If we revolve this, we'll get a collection of surfaces, which then we could try and knit together, and, but it's, it, it doesn't work really well. I'm not really pleased with the result. We want a solid. And you can print out, if your goal is to 3D print or send this to Mastercam or something, or CAM software, you are able to take surface geometry and use that for that. But solids are really nice because solids give us other advantages later on. Um, and it, it, they do print out a little bit easier sometimes than just a collection of surfaces because there are normals. There's a front and a back side every surface, and I don't want to go into detail on that. But so this is what we need to do. If we go back home, you'll see under Modify, there is the Join feature. And we want to join this profile so that we could revolve it. But if we do that right now, it blows away our parametrics, all those dimensions, those constraints. And the beauty of parametrics is the ability, as you can see, to change without redrawing everything. Now, yeah, people could argue, well, there's extend and there's things like that. Not the same. It's not the same. You want to try and maintain these parametrics. So I'll get off my soapbox and let's continue. Here's my suggestion. You don't have to do this. If you don't care about it, you don't have to. But Let's go to Mirror. Click here and drag a, uh, to surround that geometry. All right. Hit Enter. And now our center line that we drew there, click and we'll mirror it across. Erase objects? No. You want to maintain that on the other side. Now I'm going to hit Escape 
Well, actually, I don't even need to hit escape. It's already escape. But you'll see we have two sides. Now, this is what we want this side on the right we'll actually use. We'll maintain the left just in case we ever need to go back and change something. So let's now go to solid. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not solid. Let's go to modify, join, and click and surround just this geometry here and hit enter. Notice the dimensions disappear. This is what I was telling you about. We don't want to lose those dimensions. That's our way to, to, to be able to modify and change it if changes come down. And when you're manufacturing and design and engineering, changes always occur. So that's why it's so important to maintain that. So, and if someone knows a better way than this, please post it down below. This is, a, this is the way I'm doing it though. Okay. So now that we have that, it's all joined, we can now go to the Solid tab, go to Revolve. Now, I'm going to just click over here to select this geometry. I'm going to hit Enter. And now the axis point, so right here, in the center to here. Okay, and let's just hit Enter. It should go 360 degrees. If it's not, look down below there and type in 360. You could always hit Undo or Control z will undo it. If you got it but let's change this now go to visualize go to uh, conceptual shift in the middle mouse button and there is our 3d model okay and if you hover over it and wait it'll say 3d solid now if we'd done it without joining it you'd get 3d surfaces and it looks kind of on the sloppy side, a lot of lines and geometry, but that's just surfaces. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do some filleting. So let's um, go and do that. So let's go to the solid tab, go to fill it edge. And if you don't see it, hit the little arrow under here. If it says chamfer, we want fill it. Okay, down here, go to radius, set it to 0.06. So 60 thousandths, and select this edge here, select that edge there, this one here, that one, and what the heck, we'll just do a bunch of them. Now I'm going to grab this bottom one right here, and we could use our Superman X-ray vision, select that one inside there without having to rotate. You could rotate if you need to see it. Oh, that was one, I don't think I want it. Oops, wanted to try and deselect it. Um, anyway, we'll just leave it. Okay, so now that I have a few of those selected, I'm going to hit uh, radius. Oh, we already had 0.6. Hit enter and enter and enter. All right, let's just add a different one to mix it up a little bit. Go to fill it edge. Let's go to radius. Let's go to 0.5, so a half inch, and select this edge right in here. Okay, and hit enter and enter. All right, now if we want to change some colors, notice the dimensions are still there. If we ever needed to update that, we could. We could just double click on those dimensions and make changes to them. Now, would it update the solid model? No, this does not have that functionality unless you, it's my understanding, unless you maintain it as surfaces, but um, when we go to solids, that's a limitation. If you're looking for something like that, uh, Inventor or Fusion 360 are, are suited very well for those. So take a look at that if you like. Okay, now let's see about uh, under Visualize and... We could go to Materials Browser, and you could select different materials, and uh, you know what, I'm going to skip this part, but anyhow, normally I like to show some other functionality, but we'll take a look at that in the labs, and that concludes Exercise 2.